Hi, friends. If you click to check out the Path McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighter, <laughs> then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick your head over to my Instagram. All timestamps will be down below. You can even click on the time bar blocks right here. And quick disclaimer, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm a low energy today, friends, but everything is good. Everything is good. I woke up at 5.30 this morning to finish my Sephora recommendations vid on the complexion category. After that, I went to vote. And the reason why I filmed today, you're like, why aren't you taking a nap? I know. I received my, <laughs> I received my skin fetish highlighter bomb duos, which I had recently purchased from Mother's latest fall VIB sale 30% off I was like can't pass that up I've been wanting to try these duos for a while but while I was filming with the highlighter yesterday and I have clips of this highlighter unscathed because right now it's looking dinge that's the problem when it's so beautifully debossed you just don't want to touch it but here's a quick clip of how it looks straight out of the package as i was trying it on yesterday i concluded that i feel this will look beautiful on like a balm something nice and adhering on the skin and because i received the duos today i'm like you know what let me try again we'll apply the highlighter by itself we'll apply it on the skin duo because i think it's just gonna look beautiful and also, as I mentioned before, I dropped my Sephora recommendations video for foundation, concealer, and powder. And I just want to let you know what I have on today because I'm sure you're wondering. Just as I said, when you apply the Charlotte Tilbury under foundation, I do not have any highlight on the cheekbones. And this is what it does. This is what I'm saying. Applied it under my foundation, went in with the Hourglass Dune shade on the PIH on my skin, went in with the Shiseido 301 medium under the eyes and all over with the Shiseido Synchro Skin and 360 Citrine. I think I gotta get another one. I think she's a little old. She's a little old. Under the eyes, the Skin Blurring Under Eye Powder in light all over, just a little on the jawline. I have her loose powder in light medium. Oh. Contour, I did apply her MD22 concealer, just give me a little sculpt. And to lightly set, I'm talking about the lightest touch of loose powder, the medium deep four lightly dusted over the concealer. So I wanted to keep the complexion light so we could focus on this highlighter as well as comparing it to the most recent releases from Charlotte Tilbury and Natasha Denona. We'll check out those swatch comparisons. Well, you know, we'll do a little combination. For some quick details, this is a part of her Celestial Divinity Holiday Collection from Pat McGrath. It retails for $64. We're looking at a suggested shelf life of 12 months. 6.5 grams of product or 0.22 ounces made in Taiwan. I don't know what they're doing in Taiwan, fam. I'm not surprised that it's not made in Italy because usually her baked formulas are Italian made. For instance, her highlighter trio. This is the first highlighter product that she released in powder form. This is made in Italy and you'll find a lot of her baked formulas, whether a complexion product or an eyeshadow, usually made in Italy. Maybe because of what's happening, they had to kind of shift around the manufacturing, you know what I'm saying? This currently went on sale for like, I think 30% off or whatever the percentage was. It might go on sale again, fam. So if you had your eye on this and you're like, mm, I don't know, $65? Wait, maybe she'll drop another winter VIP 30% off, you know, in November and closer to Christmas time. I will keep an eye out, but a note about the packaging, it seems that with the, the cheaper packaging that was reserved for her Celestial Divinity Mega Mothership, some people felt her Lux Quad packaging wasn't great, not as good as last year. I feel all the luxness that was missing from those palette constructions went into this highlighter packaging. It is heavy, okay? It's like a paperweight. Like, I could use this as such. It comes with a twist cap, and inside you have the highlighter. There's no mirror, you know, as beautiful as this is with the gold mirrored finish. You have the PML logo hieroglyphic design on the top. It's not the most practical. I, I hear you if you're thinking about the same thing. This is something I would not take along for the ride. 
Okay, it's gonna weigh me down. It's gonna weigh all my other makeup in the same bag that it's in with down. I gotta pick up another mirror if I wanted to apply this, as opposed to the Natasha Denona, right? Got a mirror in there just like the Charlotte Tilbury. Before we get into these comparison swatches, I wanted to quickly read the description from papagrathlabs.com. Succumb to a guilty, spell G-I-L-T-Y, I see what you did there. Pleasure with this new high performance highlighter formulation. We're looking at a new formula fam. Golden champagne hued luminosity pairs with skin tone refining pearl to instantly illuminate with a lightweight silk powder veil that gilds the high points of the fish or the entirety of the body. Mm. In shimmering beauty bullion, Bouillon, debossed with signature Pat McGrath Labs hallmarks, this limited edition golden compact is a timeless treasure. Glow forth and prosper. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if the packaging on its own is limited edition and this highlighter will return in a different type of packaging or the whole unit is just limited edition. So I guess we'll stay tuned on that. Again, I tried this yesterday. I do still believe that this is first impression phase. I think this is more pink than champagne gold. And while we're at it, just come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. Here we have the Sublime Skin Fetish Highlighter. It's a beautiful texture. Look at the shine. Look how smoothly that applied. Without a doubt, the, t the texture is there, okay? Why don't we go into the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow. Now this is more of a baked jelly type of formula. I would use a stiffer brush with this, not a soft one, but you can see immediately how more just much more champagne gold it is compared to Pat's highlighter. And moving into the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Superstar Glow. This is more of a traditional powder formula and in the same manner as the Skin Fetish highlighter was advertised, this is also advertised to be applied on face and body. So this is what we're looking at. I think this still, even though it looks pink in the pan, leans more champagne than Pat's. So here is our trifecta of holiday highlighters. You got Pat McGrath, you got Natasha Denona, and you got the Charlotte Tilbury. You see how much more warmth exists in the Natasha Denona highlighter and just, this is a very interesting color. Not one I would expect from a champagne gold description for the shade, and depending on your undertone, maybe because I'm a certain undertone, it appears more pink on moi. If we wanted to quickly go into her original highlighter trio, which I can't hold up to camera, unfortunately, because some of the powders dislodge and they'll fall on the floor. Iridescent Pink 003 is more of an opalescent pink flip. Fine Gold 003 is more of an antique yellow gold flip, one of my most favorite highlighters ever. And of course, Bronze Nectar 003 Classic for deeper skin tones. I mean, that shade is just sublimely gorgeous. Sublimely? Alicia, you really do need that nap. I immediately thought about the Suku blush palette because this shade, this pinkier shade, kind of reminded me of Pat's shade in terms of the color. It's much lighter, but it still has that, that same pinky undertone. And the topier shade right underneath is it's a strange shade. I, I yet have, haven't really pinpointed the exact color, but it kind of reminds me of Pat's highlighter. Now, going into these highlighter duos, this is this has just become like a, a highlighter extravaganza video. I got all three because, I mean, might as well. Okay, these now cost $48, but I believe it was 30% off that at the time. I'll put the price up next to me because I can't do math. Oh, let's start out with bronze. This is the component, very luxe. It has the, again, the Pat McGrath hieroglyphic logo etched in here, gold trimmings. It's just a beautiful, oh no. The stick dislodged from the thingamajiggy. Look, see, it's in the lid. No! Oh, okay. I don't want to mess this up. Just there we go. 
we're back in there. It's okay, it's okay. Helpful, it says highlighter on one side, balm on the other. So this is a duo where you could just use the universal balm where it's just clear. It creates that beautiful luminescent effect, luminescent. And then the other side is the actual color. So this is in bronze. Why don't we put it next to the powder bronze? Ooh, that's pretty. I like how it's subdued, especially if the point of you buying this is because powder highlighters are just too much. Typically, if you do apply a cream highlighter, whether it's in stick form or compact form, it's just going to yield a more realistic skin-like finish simply because creams blend better than powder. Next up, we have Nude. And just so you can see, this is the balm side. It's the same shade in all three. And it's just a clear balm that when you apply on the cheekbones, it's just gonna create that radiant glow effect from within without having any additional shimmer or any of those. If you don't like any of that texture, you know? Okay, the, the, the nude side came intact, thank God. Here is nude, let's see how that looks like. Ooh, that's pretty. Right at the center of the cheekbone, just rah. And lastly, we have golden. I was before, when I had considered buying this earlier this year, jumping between nude and golden because it either could work on me, but I'm happy I got all three and I waited for the sale. Let's take a look. That definitely looks more gold. Definitely look golden. Ooh, I like that. It's not super yellow. It's like a champagne. Beautiful, would be beautiful under this highlighter. Now I don't have anything on my cheekbones. I did put on the Charlotte Tilbury under my skin because I just wanted to give you another opportunity to see it in action since I raved about it in my recommendations video. I don't think it's going to alter how the highlighter will look, but if you really feel like it would, I'll be more than happy to get back on here and do a live or just put it on again, you know? I have several brushes. I have my Wayne Goss Airbrush, my Sony G Sculpt 2 and Designer Pro, as well as the Koyuto Premium P05 brush. So we got a little bit of everything. I know I don't have a synthetic brush here, but I usually mainly use natural hair brushes for highlights. So let's pop this on, shall we? I feel like you gotta come in a little closer. Okay, good. I've been loving my Wayne Goss for highlights, so I'm gonna go side to side and tap that on right on the cheekbones. And when I applied this yesterday, I really appreciate how lightweight it is. It looks beautiful on the skin, but you can detect how it's more pink than champagne. But it's so easy to apply, like there's no need to buff, you could just press it on. Going in again, just right on top. It definitely reminds me more of the Charlotte Tilbury versus the Natasha Denona. Now, this is what I do usually. I like to apply the Natasha on top of other highlighters because it definitely has a little more shine than even the Charlotte Tilbury. I will put the Pat McGrath and Charlotte Tilbury in the same soft, focused, low-key category. It's funny, even though it has a lot of shine on the swatch, it's more subdued when applied on the skin. Maybe that's good for you, maybe you were expecting a little mo. I understand. Before we do that, however, I just wanted to demo how beautifully this lays under a balm. Let's say you wanted to experiment, apply the balm on top, and you were afraid if that would disrupt the powder's texture on the skin. This is the balm side of the golden stick, and when you apply it, it doesn't move the powder. It just, it all melts together, and it gives you more of that like, glass skin look. And if you wanted to, let's say, take another another brush like the Sculpt 2, go back in with the skin fetish and on top of the balm, you're just gonna get a little mo. See that? This is very layer friendly. And if you wanted to see, I'll take my finger and just lightly apply on the center of my lid. I have the Surat Noir Lash Tint. I love that so much. So this is how it looks on the eyes and I feel it just gives a really nice beautiful glow. This will be your one and done. I mean, yes, if you decided to take it along for the ride and you had a bronzer at hand, you could apply the bronzer shade through the crease, slap on the skin fetish on the lid and be done. And be done. What I wanted to show you, however, is layering the Natasha Denona on top of Pat. And see, this is what the Natasha Denona does. And this is what I also demoed in my foundation video, my rec video, that Natasha's formula has a little more shine and you have to pick the right brush. This is a great brush to pick up hard textures, like more hard pan textures like these versus a regular powder like the Charlotte or the Pat. But look at that. 
that it just amped it up but if you're not about this then you just keep it at pat or if you have the charlotte tilbury you're not impressed with pat you just keep the charlotte tilbury okay you have either of those you hate all of them but i'm so sorry <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. So let me go in with the bomb side again, but on this cheekbone. So we're setting it up real nice. I'm gonna try the fan brush because I'm a fan of this fan brush. And I did this yesterday and I really love the effect. It was just so lightweight. Like, look at that. You gotta put this on top of something, fam. I feel to get the most sheen and for it to look the most glass-like, but still natural. This is why I love this fan brush because you get that radiance and luminosity without it looking heavy on the skin. Look at the skin, how smooth it still appears. And I'm hairy. So if you have the duos or maybe you just have a different type of a bomb, maybe you have the Danessa Myricks uh, duet bomb in clear, or I think it's universal or another shade, lightly tap on the skin and then go over it with Pat's highlight. Yes. As far as texture, wear, it's beautiful. I mean, the way it just blends into the skin, the way it plays well with the balm. You know, we could run into trouble where the balm is just too tacky or what have you, or maybe the powder is not best applied on something like a balm. But it just plays so well with this texture. And you saw on this side how we just layered on top of each other powder balm more highlighter and you just get a beautiful shine just the radiance and the glow from within and here's a little more low key because we didn't apply as much product but it still has impact and i just can't get over how layering these two products yields a more of a glass skin effect and you still have that shine and now i'm curious to see this on a deeper skin tone because again wouldn't consider this champagne gold this leans a little more dare I say cool pink. Although it doesn't look ashy on me, I know I'm not on the deepest part of the spectrum, so it'll be interesting to know if on a deeper skin tone, it will still yield that glow without looking ashy or too cool pink. I wanna see the nude side on top and maybe we could put like bronze more on the, the lower part of the cheek. So let me tap on nude right here. I think that's so pretty and then I'll press it on and around the brow bone take more of the skin fetish and just pop it on top oh yes just lightly here on the arch so it could just all combine beautifully i'm dying to see Ooh, you know what you know what i'm dying to see this bronze shade i don't i'm gonna put it right under because i think it's gonna look beautiful on top of md22 just right here Yes, and I'm taking it over the cheeks as well, just wrapping it around. Golden, maybe we'll apply it lower here on the cheeks. Oh, I'm so happy I got these duo sticks. They're so easy to use and just so they're subdued, very quietly radiant. Play it right here on top. Oh, yes, that is absolutely gorgeous. Let me go in with my fan again with the skin fetish and just whip it right on top. Woo! That, that's nice. I'm gonna take a little more right on top of the bronze just to, just to bump it up. Just so we can have even eyeballs, I'm applying the uh, skin fetish highlighter on this eye. Now with my BK Beauty 203 brush on the bronze stick, I'm taking it on the outer part of my lid and just kind of whipping it through the crease. And I should wash this brush because there's there's some bluish on it, but it's fine. It's totally fine. I think that looks lovely on the lids. What a great alternate way to use the stick if you don't want to reserve it just for... This right now is getting crazy. Woo! I'm so happy I refilmed this because yesterday I didn't really love how it looked. But retrospectively, I think it was because as much as I love the Pat McGrath concealer, you have to be really light-handed when you're working around the cheekbone because it has a lot of coverage. And I think when you apply her highlighter on top of that concealer, 
it could look a little heavy, but I didn't apply as much product today on my cheekbone when doing my complexion. I took Shiseido right underneath and the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter right here kind of connected both concealer and foundation. They met in the middle, so I didn't have to apply so much product on this area. So when it came to applying the highlighter, it was just the perfect storm of just enough concealer, just enough glow. Look at this skin. Look at this skin. I'm still within the first impression phase of things. I do think this is a beautiful formula. It has to shine, maybe not as shiny as Natasha Denona, but I do think it has a little more shine than the Charlotte Tilbury. If you wanted to quickly see Char, maybe more on the bottom here on the actual cheek. Char is still beautiful. It has that... Like, when you rub it in here, you see it has just that glow, that radiance. Taking some of my Designer Pro, pressing it right here, I feel it's very similar to Pat's. Very similar to Pat's. It's just a tiny bit more subdued, and it leans more champagne. So again, Pat is going to give you a little more pink, Natasha a little more golden, Charlotte, a little more pinky champagne. And just for fun, since, you know, we're applying all the highlighters, might as well. I want to pop on some iridescent, excuse me, iridescent pink 003, just right in the middle of it all. And look how that brings out a little more pink. Ooh. And what if we applied fine gold on top of the skin fetish? Oh, yes. It's definitely going to be a little more antique. Oh, but... The way these products, however, are layering on each other, seamlessly though, I'm not mad at it at all. Hey, hey. So we got more of a pinky side, we got more of like a gold yellow side. All right, fam, that is my uh, second first impressions. I really do enjoy this highlighter. I enjoy its texture, its lightweight, but it still has that impact. And what I think the most standout quality about this highlighter is how well it layers on its own, on top of a balm, under another highlighter, over another highlighter. That could be a completely different formula, a completely different texture. And you will be successful in creating that glow without it looking heavy on the skin, without looking obvious, which I think we're trying to achieve when finding the right highlighter for our skin texture, especially if we're undergoing drier skin conditions, skin types. I wouldn't set my cheekbone. Just based on my experience yesterday and today, I feel if you apply the Skin Fetish Highlighter on powdered skin, you'll have to keep applying over and over again to get to that glow factor you're looking for because I do think this formula works on a creamier base. Maybe you don't apply concealer or foundation and you just wear this on bare skin and I think it will look beautiful, but do make sure the bare skin is well moisturized or you go in with your favorite balm, whatever that might be from whatever brand you love. I think those conditions will set you up best if you want to get the greatest experience from this highlighter. All right, fam, that is it. Let me know if you plan on picking up the Sublime Skin Fetish Highlighter from Pat McGrath. If you already have it, what you think about it. If it's still on your radar, but maybe this changed your mind. You're like, you know what? I don't need it. I have so many highlighters. I would love to know down below. And until then, fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review tutorial, highlighter extravaganza, monthly favorites, or nightly live chit chat. Take care, and I will see you again soon.